Have you ever imagined cities like Sydney disappearing? Well, that's what could happen if we continue to pump greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. Sea levels could rise by almost 60 metres and we could end up swimming with the fishes. My name is Luke and I'm delighted to bring you this video as part of a university course run by Dr. Joelle Gerges and Dr. Nerali Abram. Scientists like Joelle and Nerali work to look at past climatic events and conditions through things like coral cores, ice cores, fossil records and even handwritten weather recounts to infer how future changes in the Earth system might look and how we might mitigate them. When we talk about sea level and sea level rise, we are talking about the level of the sea's surface relative to pre-industrial times. Now, the sea level is already rising by 3.5 millimetres each year, and it mightn't seem like much in the grand scheme of things, but trust me, it is. Putting things plainly, sea level rise isn't great because the ocean warms from too many greenhouse gases being emitted into the atmosphere. Go us. The oceans warm, ice caps warm, they melt, then coastal communities become faced with risks like inland retreat, ecosystem-based adaptation and building walls. In terms of what causes sea level rise, there are a few things, including thermal expansion of the ocean and changes in land water storage. But the focus point for this video is melting ice caps and glaciers. Two of the most influential masses of ice in the world on the level of the sea and how much it is rising are the West Antarctic Ice Sheet and the Greenland Ice Sheet. I want to start with the Greenland Ice Sheet. The Greenland Ice Sheet is totally land-based and is not in contact with the ocean, until obviously it melts and flows into the ocean, that is. Year to year its melting varies, but the more longer term trends show that its rate of melting is increasing rapidly. Being completely land-based, the Greenland Ice Sheet exhibits surface melting where, if it doesn't run off the surface and into the sea, it refreezes and forms an impermeable layer of new ice, causing more meltwater to flow off into the ocean the next time that melting occurs. To put things into perspective, if the Greenland ice sheet were to completely melt, it would contribute some 7.5 metres to sea level rise. Crazy, right? The ocean would rise by 7.5 metres. I don't know about you, but that's pretty difficult to fathom. The other large ice mass that is having a major contribution to the sea level rise is the West Antarctic ice sheet. This bad boy has been the source of many scientific concerns for around 30 years, which is how long ago that we noticed a clear loss of ice mass. The West Antarctic Ice Sheet is incredibly susceptible to melting because it is actually in contact with the ocean at a point known as the Thwaites Glacier. This means that a rather sizable portion of it is floating on the surface of the ocean as it extends down beneath the surface and there comes a point where it comes into contact with bedrock or solid ground. This is called the grounding point. The grounding point, as it's called, is constantly moving further inwards, causing greater instability. Now, as we all know, the ocean is warming. And the increased instability means more ice is breaking off and floating into the ocean, creating a greater overall ice surface area and exposing more ice to the warming ocean, and thus increasing its rate of melting. Now, the West Antarctic ice sheet is big. And if it were to say, I don't know, completely melt, it would contribute a whopping 58 metres to sea level rise. Now, I don't know about you again, but I'm pretty sure that means we'd end up like the lost city of Atlantis, no? Going back in time using climate proxies like coral cores, ice cores, fossils and even pollen, scientists can start to piece together the puzzle of what Earth used to be like. Over 30 million years ago, there was actually no ice on Earth, which is hard to imagine, right? I think it's safe to say that the world was, well, hot. However, after this point, the Antarctic ice sheet began to form. The past 1 million years can give scientists a look at just how reactive the sea levels were to climatic shifts, and it also helps them to figure out how maybe future sea level rise events may occur and what kinds of things we can expect to happen. Here you can see past sea levels since 1880. Each blue point represents a year in which a measurement was made, and the red trend line clearly indicates an upward trend. A 2019 study found that the last century has seen sea level rise between 11 and 16 centimetres and could continue to rise by another 50 centimetres by the end of this century, and that's only one lifetime away. A 2015 study also found that we will not be able to stop ice loss from the West Antarctic Ice Sheet and the Greenland Ice Sheet if global temperatures surpass 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. On top of this, a new 2020 study has stated that if we continue with business as usual and if we achieve 10 degrees of warming, we have committed to an ice-free Antarctica in the future. Sea level rise has relevance with coastal Australia because of its high population density. Take this coastal inundation map of Nowra, New South Wales, where high tide projections in the year 2100 are indicated by the shaded blue areas. 
There are various methods for mitigation that could prove effective to sea level rise. However, Dr. Andrea Dutton in a 2017 TED talk says that we have already committed to a six metre sea level rise, so the only long term method may well be retreating further inland.